This video was brought to you by Bedroom Planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, and Stolenberg. Yo, what's up? We are now at Nibnes Supercharger, and behind me here you see Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. This is made in America, not China. I will be getting made in China car soon from Marcus Biel also. But anyway, so you see today it's uh, 25 degrees Celsius outside, nice and hot. And I've done a range test with this car before. Just the exact same car, exact same tires, but it was around 10 degrees. So I want to know how much more efficient is it today when it's 25 versus, uh, versus 10 degrees Celsius. So that's what we're going to find out. We don't have to do a full range test because uh, we already know the battery size. Uh, all we need to do is to measure the consumption over a, a nice stretch. So you see, yeah, 25. So I think what we will do is just drive far enough to even out any, I don't know, uh, spikes or anything, and maybe try to make it somewhat realistic. So the stretch is actually 167 kilometers round trip. So right now I'm just topping up a little bit. Oh, maybe I should disconnect because the battery might be heating up now. Yeah, but uh, yes, let's disconnect, wait a little bit. I need to shoot the Thai video anyway. And then we let the battery cool down before we do the run. So we will be starting at 120 kilometers per hour first because right now it's half an hour past noon and you see that there's not much traffic and not many cars charging yet. So we want to do the high speed test first. Right, we are on the move now. So uh, right now we have here, you see this is scan my Tesla. So we have 71% uh, uh, state of charge on the battery. Uh, this is actually a range display. And uh, what is it to say? Yeah, this is rear wheel drive. So you see, it's only one motor, rear motor. And you see, the temp temperature on the battery is at 37 degrees Celsius. So not too hot. Uh, so it means that the car shouldn't be spending extra energy cooling down the battery. And uh, temperature outside over here, 22.5 degrees. It was 25 at Nebene. So I think the temperature here will vary a little bit. So uh, still a little bit of traffic. I hope uh, I don't get stuck behind anyone. You see the speed here, it reports at 121 kilometers per hour. And it's 122 on speed though, about 120 GPS speed. Okay, I see we have a little bit of side wind, uh, maybe slight headwind. Consumption right now is 188, but we have to wait for it to stabilize. So, uh, oh, oh, wow. Traffic is picking up a little bit. Yeah, so the thing is that I don't want to get stuck behind slow pokes because it might ruin uh, ruin the test. I actually have to drive slower and then maybe I have to semi draft behind someone before they uh, let me pass. And that will actually give lower result and the result look better than it should be, you know. We just passed Harmer now and over here it's 23 degrees. It was 25 uh, around Stang. So wow, nice, nice and hot summer. So uh, yeah, we're getting close to the turnaround point at the Rutsugda. Uh, consumption is 177, but if you look here, see that the last 50 kilometers, we actually average only 170. So we have to see once we turn around and go back to the starting point, what the consumption will be. But uh, wow, nice day, nice and hot summer. Yes, yeah. We are back at Nebenes starting up. So this run, it was 172 watt per kilometer. So when I did it, uh, ooh, that was a while ago, in 10 degrees Celsius, it was 180. So it's it's lower, but you see, not that much lower, but this, you know, 172 is remarkably good. And when it comes to error though, error, the, the, the distance error is so low. You see, it, it's 0.5. A kilometer per yeah one point so that's like 0.3 percent error hmm i wonder why i was getting bigger error when i did 1000 kilometer challenge i estimated to 0.9 percent there but okay so anyway we're charging up a little bit we need to charge up to go to the next run i calculated i need around 40 percent to do the slow speed test so yes and also i need to charge up and then let the battery cool down a little bit before we start char uh, before we start driving. We are on the run again. This time the 90 kilometers per hour test. So we have to go to 92. It's 25 degrees Celsius over here, and the consumption right now is 135. 
is fluctuating a bit. So um, we have to wait until we are back in the starting point before we see the real consumption. But, uh, huh, you know, to my big surprise, it's 3 in the afternoon now. Still not too much traffic today, and I think it's because it's nice and hot. And uh, people who are in the cabin, they actually go home late. So we might see that uh, maybe in a couple of hours we'll see more traffic on the road. We are back at the supercharger again. So um, the result from the low speed test now shows that we had a consumption of 128 watt per kilometer. And that was barely any lower than the previous test. Uh, in the, in the co like colder test with 130. So that's only 1.5% lower consumption. Whereas in the high speed test, we had 4.5% lower consumption. One explanation could be that I just re uh, I supercharged right before I went there and then I let the battery cool down for 15 minutes. But when I left here today uh, for the 90 test, the battery was still at uh, 50 degrees Celsius. So maybe the car spent a little bit extra because actually if the car spends, uh, uh, well, it was actually around 500 watt maybe extra for a while, that will actually uh, turn out to be maybe two, one, two, three watt hour per kilometer for the whole test stretch here. And also another thing is that I did only did a, a short-ish test where I drove from 50% down to uh, 5% or whatever. So towards the end, the temperature usually goes up because voltage drops and then current has to go up and they have slightly more losses. So actually for a full real world test where I charge in 90 or 100%, then of course you will be spending more time on the higher end of the state of charge scale where you have higher voltage and lower current and lower losses. So that's the only explanation I have that the difference is smaller in the low speed test. But uh, you know this shows you that an efficient car that like Model 3 doesn't gain that much by driving in hot weather. I think uh, if you drive a less efficient car, less aerodynamic car, then the difference will be bigger. But it was at least interesting to see. Uh, I guess I wasn't hoping for that more, but yeah, we're still getting pretty nice range on these cars. So uh, I don't remember what the VLTP range for Model 3 is, but uh, this one, I mean, it's not VLTP, by the way, the test I do is not VLTP. The VLTP includes a test cycle that resembles some city driving or whatever. This is just highway driving, just bear that in mind, yeah. But all right, anyway, uh, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.